Okay, Stanley. You bet, Stanley. Sure thing, Stanley. <coughs> Chumley, that was Stanley. He wants to see me right away. Probably got some sort of important job. Well, what is it, Stanley? Want me to fix the TV? Repair the clock? No, no, no. Nothing like that, thank goodness. I just want you to tell everybody in the zoo that they're invited to a concert tonight. A concert? Yes, a brand new piano's arriving today, and tonight we're going to have a concert. Ah, and who's going to play the piano? I am. You are. <laughs> Don't laugh when I sit down to play Tennessee Tuxedo. I've just finished a mail-order concert piano course, so never mind the smart remarks. Just tell everybody, 8 o'clock sharp, tonight. So Tennessee spent the whole morning running around the zoo. He told the elephants and egrets, the lions and the leopards. He talked to the bulls and the bears, the birds and the bees, until by noon, he was exhausted. This is ridiculous, all this running around. What we need, what we need, what we need are uh, extension phones. <laughs> Hello, Stanley. I just had a great idea. Extension phones for everybody in the zoo. But Stanley, but, 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 I see. If we want phones, we'll have to build them ourselves. Thanks a lot. So that's how Stanley feels, Chumley. But we'll show him. We will build our own phones. Uh, gee, Tennessee, you're a regular Alexander Rare Time Bell. Well, thank you, Chumley. I suppose I do have a certain mechanical genius. Now, bring that phone over here, and let's see what makes it ring. But several hundred small parts later. This is obviously a defective telephone. Hmm. I've got it. We don't need the phone after all. We can use the garden hose. Look, Chumley, you stay here, and I'll take the hose around the corner and talk to you. Uh, okay, Tennessee. Are you ready, Chumley? Then here is the message. Tennessee Tuxedo will not... <laughs> Chubbly. When I get my hands on you... I'll tear you limb from limb. <laughs> Maybe it's time we got a little assistance. Uh, you mean go to see the man with all the answers? Yes, Chumley, Mr. Whoopi. Soon afterward, our friends found themselves in the offices of Phineas J. Whoopi. And you boys want to know how to build a telephone, eh? Well, I'll just connect you with information. <laughs> a small witticism. Now, where did I put that three-dimensional blackboard? <laughs> oh, yes, it's in the closet. Here it is. Now, let's see. Oh, yes, the telephone. Every phone has two parts. The speaking part, called the transmitter, and the listening part, called the receiver. These are connected by wires to another phone. And an electrical current from a battery runs through them. Now, let's take a closer look at the speaking part. Right here is a thin piece of metal called a diaphragm. And behind this diaphragm is a little box containing tiny grains of carbon. The electricity goes through the carbon. Now, when you speak, your voice makes the diaphragm vibrate. When that happens, it presses the carbon particles closer together and regulates the flow of electricity. You see? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, over at the receiver, there's a little magnet and another diaphragm. As the current goes through the magnet, it makes this diaphragm vibrate in the same way so that the same sound comes out of the receiver as went into the transmitter. Try it, Chumley. That's fine, Mr. Whoopi. But 
Chumley and I could never build electromagnets and carbon particles. Isn't there a simple way? Well, yes, my boy, there is. I can show you how to make a phone out of two tin cans and some wire. Stretch the wire between them tightly. Now, when you talk into one can, it makes it vibrate, which makes the wire vibrate, which makes the other can vibrate, just like the telephone. Phineas J. Whoopi, you're the greatest. Now, here are the two tin cans. Scout around and see if you can find some wire. Okay, Tennessee. Okay, Joe, this is the place. Let's unload the piano. think I'm a genius. Chumley, you're a genius. Where'd you get all the wire? Let's hook it up and run a test. Okay, Chumley, take up the slack. Put it tighter. Tighter. Now. Can you hear me, Chumley? Uh, gee, Tennessee, I hear you fine. Good. <laughs> Whoops. I told you, Tennessee Tuxedo does not fail. <laughs> If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a butterfingered walrus. Working very hard, Tennessee and Chumley soon had telephone connections to every animal in the zoo. Hello, monkey house. Don't forget the concert tonight. Hello, yuck. Don't forget tonight. Stanley's going to play the piano. Yes, it ought to be a riot. That night, all the animals showed up for the concert. All were ready to enjoy themselves except for Chumley, who was beginning to get a little worried. Uh, uh, hey, Tennessee, uh, 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 tell me, how does the piano work? Not now, Chumley. Stanley's about to come out. Uh, uh, do the wires have anything to do with it? Of course. It's the wires that make the music. Mm. Uh, Tennessee, uh, there's something I gotta tell you. Later, Chumley, later. Here comes Stanley. This is going to be good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, my friends. I know we're all going to find this a most memorable evening. For my first selection, I'm going to play The Lost Chord. <laughs> Piano wires? You took the piano wires for our telephone? Oops. You! You! You ruined my concert! Chumley, I think it's time to try a long distance. Tennessee Tuxedo, come back here! Faster, Chumley! He's gaining on us! Look out! The wires! Tennessee Tuxedo, this time you've gone too far. Tomorrow I'm going to make you official zoo messenger boy, and I'm going to run you ragged. Well, Chumley, what have you got to say for yourself now? <laughs> you know, Chumley, sometimes I think you're a wrong number. <laughs> 